Honey Bee friends. I'm so glad to be back. I'm Nikki of Nikki Hearts Cards, and I am here today with a fun thing from the new release. We're going to look at Bold Backgrounds Vintage Roses, which if you haven't seen this set, it's a large set, and it's so nice because you basically just need this set and a sentiment, and your card is done. You don't have to do a whole lot of mixing and matching, which is really fun. The main topic of today's video is going to be customizing your paper. So I'm going to start with some pattern paper, but I'm going to make them mine um, with some ink blending. We're going to make some of our own paper with um, some paste and different things. So stay tuned for some cool techniques during this. This card is going to be using this pink from one of the paper pads and a nice sage color. Now that's just our starting point. We're going to add things to these papers to make this card really pop and be customized to how we want it and the colors that we want. So I think this is a great way to use up extra cardstock if you have it and to think about your cardstock in a new way. So I love that Honeybee has these six by eight layers so that it's easy to die cut that out. But before we die cut, I'm going to do a set of ink blending first to get this as a kind of spotlight background. And that's a lot easier to do before you die cut it. So we're going to start with two inks that I felt like matched this paper really well. The first one is Sage from Catherine Pooler, and the second one is Spruce. And the goal here is to create colors that are similar to what we've got in our cardstock so that the middle or the center part of the cardstock is going to look like it has a spotlight on it. So I want to take this ink blending and go darker towards the center, leaving the light right in the middle. And then I'm going to add a very dark line around the outside. So let me speed this up and kind of show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to start with the lightest color and go all the way around with spruce. Actually, I think it's sage is the lighter color. Sorry, I zoomed in so I can't see my colors anymore. But what I'm doing is going around with that and then I'm going to come back and add that really dark amount to it as well. So you'll see that at the end, it is going to look like the middle is just a spotlight and that's going to look so cool on this design. So with this, I'm using a silicone mat so that I can tap my brush off and really not get any specific brush marks. So you always want to come from off the paper to on the paper to make sure you've got good even ink blending, especially when you're using pattern paper. Some pattern paper is smoother than others and so you've got to be careful with your ink blending. Sometimes I feel like you can see it even better when I put this dye over it. See how the middle is nice and light and the outsides are dark? So I'm going to run this through the die cutting machine and you'll see that parts of it come out um, and parts of it don't. So you could easily use a little fussy cutting and make this the actual shape of the leaf border. I am going to leave a little bit of a border on it. I'm just going to punch out the middle parts. And the reason I'm leaving a border is I just kind of like that look a little bit better. I like it holding. It's almost like it's got another piece of paper right back there. So I'm going to do that for my card and just punch out all these little pieces that come out so that you can see through the die cut. So here's what that looks like. And I did make a little pile of all the pieces that came out. You could put these back in and really stack things up so that you've got some dimension, but I'm just gonna put a piece of paper behind my image that is in similar color so that you can still see that it's a whole different die cut on the top. I just like that look a lot. Now it's time to get the flowers cut out. So remember we're using the pink pattern paper from Honeybee and I'm going to cut these flowers out and then we'll arrange them on this piece so you can see how they fit. So we are definitely going to need to cut out some more flowers because each of the times that you go through the die cutting machine, you make one of each flower. So right now I'm looking at the large flower, which there are two of. Then there are of the medium size flower, there are three, I believe, and then of the bud, there's also three. 
So the easiest way for me to figure out where things go, see how I have this little piece and I'm not sure which flower it goes on, is to look at the shapes on the background and see where it fits. And really, it could probably go on most of these flowers somewhere. So I'm going to save it to the end and assume that it probably goes on my biggest flower because in general, the die cuts like these, um, the biggest flower has the most detail and the most layers in these honeybee sets. So if you're not sure of something, just make like what I did up at the top of this screen I made three piles for the different flowers and then I have these couple of small pieces that I've got to decide where they fit in the range of things but I'm not going to worry about it a whole lot I'm going to put them aside and once I have my flowers built it will come together and we will put it somewhere we may not put it in the right place that's okay um, but it's going to look amazing no matter where we put it because it's just so much detail for flowers so don't stress if you don't know exactly where the pieces are going they fit a lot of different places and you can make whatever flower super ornate that you want. You have a lot of freedom. Okay, so we are going to um, take this piece of paper and we're going to customize it with ink blending. I'm going to be using Catherine Pooler inks and the small brush um, just to go around the edge in the lightest color. So we're going to use pink champagne and we're going to use a darker color. So I'm going in with the lighter color right now. This is pink champagne and I'm creating an edge around each petal. You can ink blend this however you want to. I just like that defined spotlight type look. And yes, I probably should have grabbed a grip mat or something like that to ink blend this on. I just am a little, I've, I've gotten grip mats for about the past couple months and I just forget sometimes when I'm ink blending these little pieces that that would make them stay in place so much easier. So I'm just gonna use my tweezers from Honeybee. But those grip mats definitely help you hold these little pieces in places if you're going to do um, any ink blending that's very small on each of the petals like this. So we're still using pink champagne and this small little brush to kind of go around the edges of each petal. And that may be all you want to do. I'm just going to take in an even smaller brush and I'm going to add just a little bit of rose petal which is the next darker color to these. Like I said, you don't have to. I just love really emphasizing that spotlight effect. It just, to me, makes the card and the flower really stand out. So once I finish here with pink champagne, I'm going to add rose petal with a waffle flower um, brush. It is a flat tip brush. Here's what it looks like. And I mean, I'm barely touching the edges with that darker color. It just gives that a little bit more depth. Okay, so next we're going to make our own cardstock. I wanted something that went with this vintage vibe, and so I'm using um, a lunar paste that's made by Simon Hurley, and it is called Gold Rush, and it's a really deep gold, and I'm just spreading it on a piece of paper so thin but that you can't see through it and I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible. I feel like that's easiest to do with one of those big spreaders but when this dries I can die cut out of it and so I'm going to use this for the centers of my flowers. This lunar paste is called Gold Rush, in case you're wondering the color. Of course, I will put all of that stuff in the description so you'll have links. Let's put together a set of the flowers. I'm going to use my Honey Bee Creative Glue, and I'm going to look at these flowers. I have them set aside into what they are and start to kind of match them up. So I usually look at my edges and try to find a point that is similar to the rest of the flower. So on this one, that top three um, right there, you'll see that middle one lines up with several of the pieces and then later on we're going to have a sharp point that lines up with other pieces so see I've got the three at the top right there I'm lining that up and then do you see on the bottom right there's a sharp point that comes out that's going to line up with the other pieces so let's keep putting this flower together so you can see so this one has that sharp little point on it that will line up you see it right there nice point. I'm not going to put the centers of the flowers in yet because remember I'm going to die cut those from the gold. So we're just going to put it together minus the centers. 
Okay, here's the middle size flower and it's very easy. It's got the point on the left right there and those two petals match up perfectly, which makes it pretty easy. The last piece of it has that same point on the bottom left, which really makes lining this up easy. Now, when we get our gold parts and add that, we may add some extra little pieces to each of these flowers, but I'm gonna show you that in just a second. So this is the end for what we're doing right now with this second flower. For the third flower, I'll just show you how it's not done. So you've got a bud here, and I actually did the pink in the outside, but this really should be green, and I'll notice that a little bit later. But this piece is super easy to line up. Probably should be green just because it's a bud sticking out, but whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to speed this up to kind of show you where these go. You can, by looking at this background, see where all of these little items go and put them on there. And like before, we had counted how many we need, but they line up perfectly so that you can get it correct. So don't worry about that. Very easy to figure out where they go. I'm going to speed through this. There's, remember, two large flowers. I think there's three buds and two of the medium-sized flowers. And none of these flowers have our gold middle accents yet. I just kind of do things in a weird order, I guess. I decided I'd go ahead and put it together because I kind of wanted to see how these flowers look laid out to decide what I was going to do with my sentiment. There's some real small um, scripty sentiments that are in this new release that are beautiful um, and they fit really well. So I'm going to show you which one I picked because it fits so nicely on this panel. Now I took the opportunity since this is a see-through panel to look through my paper pad and just use another pattern paper as the back. I really liked this brown floral because it makes it look like there's a nice shadow there. And then I used these sentiments from the Lean On Me set, and look how nicely they fit. I just moved the stamp set around. I know you can't see exactly what that sentiment says, but I promise I'll show you in the final card. Okay, here's where our fun um, little elements come in. So I cut out all of the centers of the flowers from that lunar paste that had dried. So it was just a scrap piece of paper with lunar paste on it. And then I'm going to cut these die cuts out of it. And now I've got these beautiful gold accents that I can add into the middle of my paper. The reason I chose this lunar paste and doing it this way versus something like heat embossing is that lunar paste, it has a really nice texture. It also has this beautiful. This is more of a vintagey gold and it's really the only color gold that I thought was appropriate with my vintage style um, background. So that's why I decided to use that. Now I'm going to add centers and then you see over to the right I've also cut out some extra little pieces that I'm not really doing much ink blending on. I just barely touch them with a brush to keep them very light because they're the highlighted pieces of these fun flowers. And then remember how I messed up the buds and I needed to add a different color. I thought about doing the outside of the bud and the gold but I ended up deciding that I was going to use the green so I cut out some green of those and I'm going to replace that so let me show you how all of that looks the sentiment that I used is thank you for the way you care it fits perfectly in this little groove and once again that's from the new release as well Okay, everything that I used in this video will be linked in the description for you. Make sure that if you hadn't done it yet, that you hit the like and subscribe and follow me out on social media. I'm at Nikki Hearts Cards and I would love to see you out there. So I love how these gold accents turned out and how we used our cardstock in different ways to create a unique card. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Bye!